one was West Wales 4, Cornwall 24. So the Chuffs have mm-hmm. got their first win in their existence, which is great news for them. Um, London Scholars 22, Swinton 48. That one went with form. North Wales 18, Doncaster 26 in in another close game in in League One. It's great to get some close games in League One because we get too many that aren't mm. close, including Keithley 62, Oldham nil. Keithley are kind of in a in a Lee sense, playing in a different division to uh yep. to everyone. Yeah, I, I actually ran into a Keithley fan whilst I was um I'm walking out walking last week um in the sort of Keithley area and uh was chatting to him briefly. He spotted I had some Wigan gear on and was uh sort of having a bit of bounce, but um was very nice and, and chatty and talked briefly about how Keith Lee are having such a good season and will it last is kind of was his attitude on it, but he was enjoying it as it were. Do you want to tell us about the standings in League One? Yeah, sure. Uh, so Kia so Keith Key, Key Lee, Keith Lee. Oh, sorry, Australian me. Uh, Keith Lee is still 100%, 11 from 11. Swinton are up to second on 18 points. North Wales and Rochdale are chasing on 16. Doncaster have 14 points. Hunslet have 11. Oldham are at seventh on seven points. Midlands and Scholars have six points. Cornwall are off the mark and off the bottom on points difference. And they and West Wales both have two points. I actually um, saw some highlights of the, the Cornwall-West Wales one. Did you, did you catch any of those highlights, Mark? No, no, I was very much um, otherwise occupied on Saturday. And, and to be honest, I, I didn't go back and check. Oh, so so it started, the game started with Cornwall kicking off, it hitting a West Wales player, then knocking it on and the ball coming straight back to Cornwall. So it was it was like the dream, dream of dream starts for them. Um, and they, they looked pretty good, actually. So um, I don't know if maybe it's because of the opposition, but yeah, I mean, that just just that start was amazing. Like a, I flicked it on, and the first the first thing was the kickoff, and I thought, oh, what's happening here? Because it's a highlight, and I thought they were actually going to score off the kickoff. They ended up scoring a couple of plays later, but it was um, for West Wales to like a terrible start, and then you know, obviously Cornwall went on with it, so it was good. Yeah, and it's good reverse of the of the earlier fixture between the two sides. That like West Wales won twenty nil. It's kind of a good. Um, exact reverse of that margin. So, but you know, Cornwall have been plugging away. Um, can't say I like everything about the club, but I do like a lot of things about the club, and um, and it's good for them to get the first win. And actually, in the news, um, they've signed Welsh back row Charlie Bodman and centre Tom Ashton. So Ashton joins from Rochdale on an 18 month deal, and Bodman moves to the Chuffs, having been released by League One rivals uh, Hunslet recently. So some bolstering their side there and clearly that's that's worked out for them in that with that first win and experienced standoff pat walker has come out of retirement to join his nephew jackson at league one club hunslet so um yeah that's uh another sign in there in league one okay wheelchair challenge cup final it was leeds 48 catalans 34 and do you know what i feel bad i haven't watched this game it was on the bbc i player and it looks like a really close result over in hull um 48 34 seems like a high score doesn't it but in wheelchair terms that's actually quite low scoring um and combative game so uh, well done to Leeds three times challenge cup winners now uh following that and um that catalan side i had a look at the team lineups um did include some of the missing players from the french side that we were talking about on last week's show so clearly mm-hmm. you know the england players came out on top against the french players there and that's really really pleasing uh, from my point of view. Yeah, leading yeah, into the definitely. World Cup after that that win against France, and then this win in the kind of a lot of England players against a lot of France players game as well. We did get a fan review on it. Do you want to share that with everyone? Yes, yeah, so Doctor Hideous, uh, the commentators kept calling Leeds England, <laughs> which is fair enough considering that they had at least three of the players who will surely make the World Cup squad. The game was close until the last few minutes. Exciting throughout, but lots of good defensive play. A great cup final. Yeah, you're right. It's because they're playing 80 minutes and it's, you know, much smaller court and they're scoring much more often. It's it's more of a um, basketball scores is what you generally get. But yes, 48-34 is, is actually quite a good defensive game. Because, I mean, if you imagine you've only got, what, there's five on, on the, the court there and it's quite a lot of space. Um, I saw a little bit of it. I saw some of the one of the leads tries. It was really skillful. So um, didn't see the whole game, but yeah, the, I, I did hear that um, that there was quite a lot of 
a good position or good sort of kicking position, kicking for position and things like that. Um, yeah, there was a bit of a, a middle battle, which you don't often get, um, and, mm-hmm. and resulting in more kicking and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, good preparation for, for all of those players. You know, there's there's four England players that are nailed on, four or five England players that are nailed on for the England squad for the World Cup, mm-hmm. with Bashara being playing for Catalans and then the likes of Collins and um, Halliwell and, and stuff for, for Leeds. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Okay, Rep Brown down under. The first game to cover was Lebanon men versus Malta men. Um, Jared Samet popped over for that one and got back in time to play in Barrow on Monday night. But I don't know if you caught that one. Uh, I I didn't see any of this one actually. It was on a Wednesday night. It was um, I think they had it at Leichhardt Oval. I didn't I didn't get a chance to look at. It. I did want to go back and look at it. Uh, my wife is Maltese, so it's always nice to support Malta. Um, but uh, yeah. I didn't really catch much of it. I, I, Lebanon and Malta, I think they were... It looks like a closer score than I was expecting. So maybe Lebanon yeah. were under strength, maybe. I don't know. I, I don't think either were, were full strength. I, I, Even though this was played just in front of what they called the rep round, it felt like this was, this was a little bit more of a, you know, some of the fringe players were playing. They weren't playing all the, right. all the top level. I don't think so, from what Fair I remember. Enough. Um, a game that did feel top level was the New South Wales women versus the Queensland women. Uh, 20 points to 14, New South Wales triumphs in this one. Um, do you want to give us a first fan view? Yeah, so Pop the Viking, what a game. Could have gone either way before New South Wales steal the win with the final in the final minutes. Thought the officials had a great game. And Paul... This was... Yeah, sorry. Paul Mack oh, yeah, score 78 got in late, uh, so you don't, you don't have it in front of you. But he said, my goodness, the standard of this game. Without standing patronising, five minutes in, I forgot I was watching women. The Gillaroos are going to put 50 on everyone at the Rugby League World Cup, including New Zealand. Yeah, the, the speed and intensity of this game was different to any other women's game that you watch, I, I, I thought. And even though it, there was a sense of inevitability that Queensland were going to do that late score, that maybe has been a, a, a legacy of how the male Queensland side have played over the years. It was New South Wales that, that finished with, the, with that late score. So um, good game. I, I guess you enjoyed it, yeah? Oh, yeah, this was a great game. And, and I'll remind Paul, because I know he's a Queenslander, that uh, that was four wins for New South Wales teams on the weekend, Paul. Um, but, uh, yeah, look, Jada Taylor, That I don't know if you saw that try that she caught scored from her goal, but um, just – and the – some of these, some of these women are just not even. Well, I suppose not for girls or women at nineteen, but they're not even sort of attached to NRL W teams yet. So um, there's a lot of talent there. There's an incredible amount of talent, and yeah, look, you would argue that the that this one, the the women and and men one. Um, oh, sorry, I'm talking about the wrong game. I'm talking about the under nineteens women's. Um, ah. Sorry. I'm talking about the wrong game, guys. The no, the other one, the this, the normal um, women's game was was incredible too. Like both games were, were amazing. Sorry, um, I didn't, yeah, didn't. Sorry, I'm not covering the under 19s game. <laughs> oh come on, the under 19s great. Uh, yeah, sorry. No, the, the this okay. This is the one with uh, Caitlin Johnson um, absolutely tore through the middle for New South Wales as well. Um, some really great performances. Uh, the word, I think Ali, the, the, yeah. The Ali Briggs were put fantastic. up a bomb that I don't think anyone could catch, but yeah, that's so great. Such a yeah. great game, this one. I thought the centres were, were fantastic for the for the blues. Um or the light blues, do they call the women? I don't know, don't get it. But um, they call them the light blues? I don't know what, what they call them. That's what I saw somewhere, but anyway. Really? Um yeah. the, the centres were fantastic. I thought they meant this made the speed was was higher, maybe slightly too high than Queensland could deal with by the end of the game. Um yeah. and and that combated what is a bigger pack that Queensland had. So um, that meant then there was the dummy half for Queensland. I can't remember her name, but she um, she took control quite a lot of the game uh, when she was on the on the field. So um, mm-hmm. yeah, strong performance from both sides. A good game to watch, and the, the speed. The, I don't think the necessarily core skill levels are that much greater in the women in this side. These sides when you look at the the top performers in the English women's super league, but mm. the speed and intensity is, is ratcheted up. So they're executing those skills in a higher intense environment 
um, by having games like this and the NRLW games. And that's where you get Paul's comment about they're going to put 50 on everyone. Um, talking about I, I putting... don't know if they'll put 50 on everyone. I'm not sure if they'll put 50 on like the New Zealand women. Sorry, let you, let you talk now. But um, I, I feel like um, they do have more intense games. So they are going to be obviously the best team yeah. in the competition. But they're only going to put 50 on everyone. No, I was just going to say, talk about putting 50 on people. New Zealand's women put 50 on Tonga's women. Um, mm. The Kiwi Ferns, 50 points to 12 over Tonga. I mean, the development of the of Tonga as, uh, with its women's rugby league set up is way behind New Zealand. So it's kind of what you would expect this result, right? Yeah, I don't think Tonga has played in three years, four years or something like that. And, I and they're think not they... in the World Cup, are they? So the, the building no, towards no. the future more than the present. It feels like they're they're still quite a fair way behind, um, but but look, they're going to get better, which is which is fantastic because you know we know I mean one team that's not in the World Cup is is Fiji, the Fijian women, and we know they're good. Um, we know if Tonga becomes good as well, it's going to be a much bigger you know try and get I'm not sure how many spots can be in the next World Cup, but if it's still the eight spots, it's going to be a, a real competition to try and get into that. No, I think it's set to expand for for, for France. Is it? Yeah. Um... Which you can see because the strength and depth is is expanding. Um, uh, New Zealand and Tonga played at uh, men's international as well. A sold out um, crowd watched New Zealand beat Tonga twenty six six. Do you want to give us the first of the fan views? Yes. Yeah, so Matt Speakman said the Kiwis are going to be a real problem in this World Cup. They got a lot right this game and rolled Tonga pretty easily. Every time Tonga play in. In Auckland, it's worth watching because the Red Sea and their singing. It's incredible that our little sport is such a huge deal to these amazing nations that represent their people proudly and fiercely. Paul Mack underscore 78 said, New Zealand at full strength, Tonga with three or four to come in from Origin or Super League. So a lot to take out of it for the Tongans. Kiwi spine is the best it's looked in years. Crowd, amazing. I didn't catch this one, but do you think they're fair representations of what you saw? Yeah, look... New Zealand, you would argue New Zealand is is maybe a better forward pack than Australia can put together. Um, and they could spine argue is, Tonga is as well. Maybe. Well, that's true. Um, and their spine. Is, the, the The problem that New Zealand have had in recent years is they did get a bit of a player drain when some of these players went to Tonga and Samoa and things like this. Um, but it feels like they've found the right players now. Like Dylan Brown, Jerome Hughes, that's that's a great halves combo. That's, I mean, it's a Melbourne Storm halfback who's tearing it up, and the and the five eight for Parramatta who has been, arguably the better half in that combination, um, and then Joey Manu at fullback. Well, Joey Manu is a fantastic setup, yeah. but as a fullback, he's just as good. Um, and Brandon Smith's great as a hooker. So, you know, you'd, you'd have to argue that every single one of them is in probably the top three in the NRL in their position. Um, I I don't know if that's correct, but you'd ha- you'd, you'd have a good argument to say that. So, you know, they, they're incredibly good um, and their backs are holding the, their own. They're so... the generally successful players now as well in that spine, whereas they've been kind of piecing together for a while of players that, that weren't at the top of the game. It feels like they've got a spine that is, that's closer to the top of its game now, which is is that difference, I think, like you say, from maybe yeah. where they'd, they'd been um, when they lost a few of the, of the strong forwards to Tonga, as well as not really having a consistent selection policy around the, the spine players. Yeah. So they'd have one great they game out of someone and one and one poor game. But this is like building, obviously it's a real positive result for New Zealand after what was a disappointing World Cup last time around. That's right. Well they went for years with, you know, having to bring having to bring someone like Lua Wai back over from from the UK and, you know, they this seems a more settled kind of team. There would probably even be there may even be some New Zealand players in the Super League that might be sort of pushing into this team. And it's going to be hard for any of them to get in because of the, this performance has been quite good. Uh, I think Tonga were good. Um, they were missing a few, but I do worry that people were maybe got a bit too high expectation for them. A lot of people were thinking, oh, they're going to, because they beat Great Britain and they beat England, they beat New Zealand now uh, in one-off games that they're going to all of a sudden be, you know, close to favourites for World Cup. I, I don't, I don't think they're as good as I think they're good, but I think they need to they need to bring some of these young guys through. And then there was some really good young players coming through. So hopefully they get a bit more experience and and they are better than what I think they're going to be. But um, 
you know, I think a semi-final for, for them is is minimum of what they need to do to keep them 